Welcome to the Lights Out Podcast. This is Chris Lights Out Lytle, and this is our journey to document the history of mixed martial arts. I have brought with me my friend, the MMA detective Mike Davis, and together we will preserve the history and hear some great stories from the world in the era of the no-holds bar. Thank you and enjoy. Welcome back to the Lights Out MMA History Podcast. I am Joey Venti. With me as always, host of the show, the MMA detective, Mike Davis. We have a special episode for you today. Our guest today is a veteran of UFC 1 and Valley Tudo Japan. He is also the most difficult interview we have ever booked. Conor McGregor is easier to get on the phone than this man legitimately. We are pleased to welcome Mr. Gerard Gordeau. Good evening. Uh, maybe it is evening with you, but it, it is uh, daytime here. But glad. So, Gerard, um, why don't we start with plugs? What are you doing now? I do nothing. I'm That's retired. Good. I'm I'm sixty seven years old, and uh, I'm take my time for my life. I I also do nothing, but I'm not retired. I, I'm I'm glad we have got that in common. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Let's go. Nobody uh, take you over. It's all, everybody get retired. That's good. That's good. So I'm doing color commentary for Ignite Fights. Joey, any any plugs on your end? Sure. Um, Fight Academy of Pasadena. Uh, all levels, all ages, from the kids' jujitsu to training for an MMA career. Fight Academy of Pasadena. Check us out. My man. All right, so Gerard Gerdo, why don't we start with the beginning? You, your career is very historic, but why don't we start on the path that got you there? Tell us about your beginnings. Uh, I was almost a um, uh, professional football player, football like uh, in Soccer. Europe, football, yeah. soccer, yes. And uh, I have too many injuries. And then uh, my friend do karate. And uh, I said, what you're doing every week? He said, yeah, a little bit karate. I said, oh, I want to look. And then I look. And uh, yeah, there were a lot of people there in the dojo. And uh, I have to stand in the, in the chamber room to, to, to practice, but I don't like that. I want to fight. And I said to the teacher, okay, I want to fight uh, that Chinese guy there. But I didn't know what he, what he was, but he was a black belt uh, from Japan and didn't know what happening, but I was beat up and I say, oh, I come back. I can train a beat you, a beat you. And that's the reason I start karate. Okay. All right. So in 1979, you entered a tournament. I think you were in high school at this time where Andy Hugh and Dolph Lundgren were in. Yes. 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 Would you mind talking to us about that? Yeah, they were nice guys. Still now, and one is dead. And uh, yeah, we, 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 we my brother fight to Dolph Lundgren, and uh, also to Andy Hook. And uh, yeah, they were good, but uh, I don't can take losses. That's the reason we train much harder and much better to beat everybody. And uh, if they have names or no names, we want. I always said I want to be the best of the world. It doesn't matter what it is. I got training. I go make experience. I go to Japan. I go to everywhere to make experience because I want to be the best of the world. What about your house growing up? What was it like? My house? Like your family life growing up. Uh, it was, yeah. It's tip, it is typical. I can write a book. I have no father. Uh, rough, rough neighborhood. Uh, don't take drugs. Everybody was on the drugs, and I see many friends of mine dying with, by the drugs. And I said, "That's not the reason. That's not the the, the thing that I want to die." Uh, I don't take drugs. I don't like it. But if people like it, they want to do it, do it. But I don't like it. And we have living in a rough neighborhood, and we have to fight. To myself and the and the, the people in the, in the neighborhood, and that's it. But so, it is a, it is a, uh, a normal thing, bad bad situation, uh, rough time. But it's not an excuse. 
20 fight UFC veteran Chris Lytles joining us. Chris, why don't you talk yeah. to us about what this what this gentleman right here meant to you in the fight game at an early age? Uh, just, just watching early fighting. Uh, I remember watching him, obviously UFC won. Uh, I remember watching him, you know, fighting uh, the, the Japanese guy who was able to lost an eye from it. I mean, just uh, just a legend of the sport. Yeah. Um, man, I always wanted to uh, learn more about Dutch kickboxing since uh, seeing the way he fought. So uh, that was my first exposure to, to really to kickboxing. That's what made me think that, that what a good thing. That, I mean, basically jujitsu, kickboxing, and boxing and wrestling were the only things I really ever worked on. Yeah, keep 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 continue and keep training and go everywhere to to get your knowledge from other people because we are born stupid. <laughs> we have to we have to learn from everybody. Yes, sir. So, it doesn't matter who you are or what you are. The information we always get is. So, Gerard, growing up in in Holland, you were one of the bouncers in the red light district. Is that correct? Yes, yes, in my city, yes. How, how difficult was that with the police, the government, the mafia? How difficult was it to stay off everybody's radar? No, everybody knows who you, who you are. And in that time, it is different than now. Uh, in the past, we fight with each other. We beat, maybe they beat me up, I beat them up. But for that, we're going to drink something. And now, yeah. if, you, if you are big and they said, oh, I don't want to fight him, they, they stop you or the, they, they shoot you because they are too, uh, too uh, scared to fight. They have a big mouth when they're drunk or drugs, but when they get penalties, they always complain, oh, look at what the bouncer do. Fuck off, man. You Dirty start, bumps. they start, but we have to end. And I don't care, I don't care by the police or the government. I don't... I don't let them uh, touch me or uh, the rules uh, shamed by the door. There are rules by the door, and I'm, I'm standing for the rules. That's it. And they have to listen. If they don't listen, hit them in the face. It's old school right there. What about yeah. Dirty Bob What about Dirty Bob Schreiber? Who? Dirty Bob Schreiber. Uh, Bob Schreiber? Yeah. Yeah, he's a very nice guy, a good heart, and a good sportsman. And a good sportsman. Friend. A good sportsman. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, he's a sportsman. I do the sports, but I'm a fighter. There's a difference with, between many fighters in the in the in the autocam of in the ring. They are they are sportsmen who do fighting sports. And my thing is, I'm a fighter. Do sports. So, so would you say when you were you know, uh, not growing up as right when you had a fight career. Well, I mean, how did you, was that from a lot of street fights? Was it from doing kickboxing? How did your fight career start? I I start with judo, yeah. And they, oh. and they, yeah, and they disqualified me because I don't like losing, <laughs> and I, and they, they they disqualified me from all the tournaments. Then I do karate. Uh, I have a big mouth. I smoke. Uh, I do everything, and I want to. I want to fight, and I want to be the best. And they beat me up also in in the in the karate uh, tournaments. But I train harder and harder, and get more information from Japan, from other guys, from Lundgren, from Andy Hook, and all the people. And but what I want to do. So growing up, you like you you're going through the system. You're working out with Ernesto Hoost over at Vos Gym. When do you get the call about UFC one? Uh, it was a few months before uh, they start, and they, they want to have a champion from Europe. And I know uh, America is an island, and they think in in Europe nothing happened there. But they, they make a wrong choice and they choose me. Well, how do they do? They try to get Ernesto Hoost first or yourself? Oh no, myself, myself. How do you connect with them? Uh, they they call the the how do you call it the union in in Holland that was good organized. We have uh, uh, an organized uh, union, 
uh, every, everybody is registered who is the champion. And I was the champion on that moment. And they want to be a champion from, uh, uh, from, from Europe, from Holland. Because they know there are good fighters there. But uh, Ernesto Hose was a little bit younger than me. And I think it was not, not his uh, turn to, to go somewhere in that high level. All right. So at UFC 1, you were billed as a karate fighter. Yes. Or you were originally a karate fighter, but you were billed as a savat fighter. The rumor was that Master Oyama wouldn't allow you to represent karate in the UFC because he didn't like the uh, he di he didn't like the idea. Is there truth to that? No, there's a little bit truth. Uh, in our system, they always say, "I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best." And boxers say always, "We are the best." And the jiu jitsu guys say, "I'm the best." And the judo guys say, "I'm the best." And uh, they want to have a movie from a fighter from Holland. And I sent in. Normal movie, but high kicks and normal fights and traditional Safat boxing. And they believe that I was a Safat nice guy who made that kind of sports. And But I know we have to go there and we have to fight for his life. So when you guys first found out, when you were first uh, presented with the opportunity for the UFC 1, what were you guys thinking? These, this is not going to happen. This is crazy. I mean, what, I mean, were you guys like, okay, just a normal thing. What were your thoughts when you heard there's really no rules? Uh, they say you have to fight in a cage and there are no rules. I said, okay. I train very hard. I do my best. And if you do your best, you can do nothing more than that. And I think I was good prepared uh, to go there. And, and as the host, he was only do kickboxing. The other guys do only boxing. The other guys do uh, judo. But I practiced in that time already, uh, like shoot boxing, like wrestling, like judo. I do everything to uh, feel and uh, train myself to uh, what's what's good for me, and I can teach the the the, the students what is not biting each other. Because we have a good boxer, like ex example Mike Tyson. He's a good, very good boxer. But when you shoot him, he don't know what to do. But I know because I do wrestling. I do everything. That's, that's the reason I go. I said, okay, I take the chance. I go there and we shall see who's and what at end. I don't care. So, Wait, so, when you first, so when you first go there and you saw... The other fighters, there's seven other fighters. I mean, what was your thought? I mean, you, the first guy you fought was a huge guy. You know, you yeah. kicked him in the face. I mean, what were you thinking? What were you thinking when you saw all the other fighters? And we think, man, this is this is about to get real. Or what was what was the what was the mood like right at the beginning? And the, the other people are that's what we told five minutes ago. The other people are when I see them, in one second I know what kind of meat I have. And I thought by myself, oh, they are really sportsmen. And they are really sportsmen. But I'm not a sportsman. I do sport, but I, I'm a fighter. That's the reason they have a, if they fight me, you have always trouble. And I don't think what they do, I, I only prepare myself. I have to survive here. And I have to knock them out so soon as possible that they don't get step up and, and start again. In the meeting, how soon before did they fly you out to the United States? Say it again. How soon before UFC 1 did you fly to the United States? One day. Oh, man. I was one day there. But uh, I like it because when I fight many times in, before that in Japan, and my body say always, if you arrive, do your thing. And... After that, I get a, a, a jet lag, not before. The, the reason is, I go there, do your thing, the body is good, and then get a, a jet lag and go to sleep. I don't, I don't, I don't uh, was, I don't care. I don't care of that moment when uh, what I have to do. You have to fight, and you, you prepare yourself like an animal, like a, a lion. 
you don't can say, oh, it is, for, it is Tuesday, but today I don't hunt. You have to do, you have to, your mind have to be 100% fighting. And like, like an automatic thing, if you think you're too late, uh, is my opinion. Now, I, I've heard before the fight actually happened. There was the rules meeting the day before, and a lot of people started complaining, and they thought that the fight might not happen. Do you remember what was being said? Were people complaining at the rules meeting? Yeah, if you complain, you are not prepared for it. You are not 100%. On the street or in your life, it's happening on that moment. You have to act on that moment. And if you come talking and uh, drink coffee and sitting there, then you think, 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 and that's not good for your fight. You have to prepare yourself, and on that moment, you have to go. And I don't, when they talking there, I know they are not sure by themselves. Because I say nothing there, sign the papers and go. Because I know I was sure for myself that I do everything to go there. I'm running hard, I do wrestling, I do uh, pets, I do train by myself to do what I think it is the best thing for that. So that made you even that made you even more confident knowing that they're they're questioning stuff. You're just like, yeah, I'm here to fight, and they're not. So you're already more confident now because you know you're ready to do whatever it takes, and they're not. Is that right? Yeah, that, that is the, the, the thing what you said is, is correct. Yes. Yeah. All right. So Chris, compounded by this, I heard a rumor, Gerard, that mm -hmm. you were smoking during the rules meeting. Yes. Is that true? <laughs> Yeah, I smoke whole I smoke all my life. So Chris, they're in the rules meeting, everyone's arguing. He's got a cigarette hanging out of his mouth and he hands in his 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 slip to fight. Yeah. I smoke I do what I uh, to be uh, relaxed and everything. Now I'm I have it here, I want to smoke now, but we talk. There's no problem. You can smoke. I, yeah. yeah I, go ahead. Go ahead. We don't I, mind. I, I all my life when I do the fights, I always in the chamber room and I make the warming up and then I take a cigarette. And, hey. and that's it. And Peter hey. Smith, you know Peter Smith, the, the kickboxer from Holland. Pe uh -huh. Yeah. He, when we fight in, in Japan together in one chamber room, I take a, a cigarette and he take a glass of beer. <laughs> and then we said, yeah, this is Budo. We have to fuck. Maybe it is not good for the. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, we have to fuck. We have to fight. We have to smoke, and we have to drink. Hey, I see. I knew I was. I should have been born in Holland. This is not fair. I need to be Dutch. I'm more of a. I'm more of a Dutch guy at heart. Yeah. <laughs> we are. We are not. We are. We are not monks. You know what I mean? No, I know. No, we're not good. Yeah. No. no okay. He, he just said something that I I picked up on. And I heard this. Uh, you would never, Art Davy would talk to you. You would say, "No problem, Art Davy. No problem, Art." That was your response. To everything. No problem, yeah. Art Davy. Yes, <laughs> because on that time, you don't can change anymore. That, uh, yeah. There are there are party, there are rules, and we have to play that. Uh, in December, I go to Japan now again, and they have a party there for karate, and they give me the rules, and then you have to fight that rules, and don't complain. Otherwise, don't go. Don't complain. The people talk too much. So let's talk about some of the other famous Dutch. And we're going to get to UFC 1. We're going to get there. No Andre Brillerman. Yes. He's Did a you ever work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a friend of mine. He does also karate. Everybody starts in Holland karate. What? Ha he was a kind of a tragic ending, though. Yes. Uh, if you steal from people, they say, I don't say anything, they say, and when you steal from people, the people don't take it. Maybe at these days you can talk about it, but in that time, don't talk about it. Don't steal, don't do that, otherwise you're dead. Hmm. How is working out with him, like as a person? Very nice guy. He was a good guy, really. He was a good, uh, uh, he had the same, uh, how do you call it, I don't know in English, but the dignity of uh, of myself. He don't care if you're two meters or 
160. He fight with you. If you want to fight, he fight with you. And that's what I like in him. We, we train in uh, Papando, in the training course. And there were Japanese guys there, and the champions of Japan. And he, he, he don't care. He was one meter 60, but he, he go in like a bull terrier. He don't care if you're black belt or 40 stripes of master, master Ken. He don't care. If you want to fight, we fight. That is what I like in uh, in, the, in that guys like Peter Smith, Andre Brilleman, Manhart, uh, Robbie Kaman. They are fighters. They don't care and don't talk. Oh, I don't want to fight him or maybe that. Fuck off, man. If you want to fight, fight. Shut up. Otherwise, go, go play. Go play soccer. Then you can complain. What about Jan Plus? Yes. He. Uh... Golden Glory president, he also died in prison. Yes. What was your experience like with him? He, he was a very good trainer to, uh, you know, in, in, in one or two seconds, no, it's just a little bit, but in 30 seconds, he know the, the, the weak points of the, his, his opponent and he know the quality of his fighter. When I fight with him in, in Japan, when he say give him a right punch, I don't think when he say do that or do that, he have a good plan in his mind. He was a good coach to to uh, to find out what how the fights go in, and he was a, a good uh, a good coach because he have the quality to find out in one second what's what's the weakest point for your opponent. Yeah, he died in prison. He was also one of the guys that did security in a red light district. Yes. All you red light district guys made a name for yourself very early in the yes. uh, MMA years. Yes, but in that time, it, it's possible because we fight and we don't shoot or, or stop you. Stop, you call it? Uh, yeah. I don't know. All right. UFC 1, walking out to the cage, what's going through your head? Nothing. Give me the money. That's it. <laughs> but the money was very fucking shit on that time. Yeah. Did you think anything? I mean, the guy you fought was pretty big. He was a lot bigger than you. Did you? That didn't care. I know you fought anybody. You were used to that, but it was like, God, this guy's big. What's going to... Yeah, Taylor Tooley. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, excuse me that I interrupt you, but if you think you're too late, you have to, like... You have to uh, act like a lion or uh, an other animal. They do what they learn from the teachers or parents, what they do. You have to do it by yourself and you have to train that ought, so many times that you don't can think, now I give him a right punch. It has to be automatic. And when I see the, the, the big guy, I said to him, I think by myself, not think by myself. You have to go down. He don't get up. He don't, he don't can up, uh, stand up anymore. Because he's, that body cannot stand up in one or two seconds. You put him down. And then we shall see how, how we finish him. All right. When you, hold on real quick. When you kicked him, did you know you knocked his teeth out? Could you feel him in your foot? Or, or how did that go? Did you see him fly out? How did that all go down? Yeah. Uh, uh, the, re the reaction was, I have to uh, kick with my shin. But... I see in one hundred from a second that his head was with, with a fence, you know, and then I cannot f do my feet behind his head, otherwise my feet go in the, in the fence. Then I hit him with with my feet. It hurts, but normally I kick with the shin. But at that moment I see the fan, and I don't don't can do it, and then I have to change in one hundred seconds. You have to kick it with the with the foot, and then uh, make a, a little punch, and that was it. No, did did you see the teeth fly out? Did you know that you knocked his teeth out? Did you know your the feet the tooth was still stuck in your foot? No, no, no. I, I I no. I feel nothing. I see nothing. I know only you have to go down. Now I heard I heard you didn't. It's one of the teeth was still stuck in your foot till like you got in the locker. Was that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a small part of it, not the whole teeth, the teeth, but uh, the small uh, the small part of it. And I get an injury in. Uh, how do you call it? 
it get re- thick and red after a few days. In, in oh, it got infected. You got an infect- it, infection. Infected because he have no mouthpiece. But okay. Oh my God! He wasn't you know wearing I mean? a mouthpiece. What? What? He didn't have a mouthpiece then. Oh no! <laughs> what is? <that? laughs> Was anybody wearing mouthpiece? I have a mouthpiece. Yes, okay, I have. At least you have some sense. Jeez, what's yeah. wrong with the one guy? <laughs> but, but that's the reason he he thought he was the best, and he know don't need protection for his teeth or other things. He he think by himself. I think I talk him later that he was the best of uh, Hawaii or Japan in the UFC. He, he, he got kicked out of the uh, of the uh, sumo wrestling organizations for fighting. So yeah, like yeah, he yeah. he had a very very big reputation. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. some of the big tournaments were like we he's too problematic and the people we can't deal with this. He's too hard of a person. Yeah. Yeah. But there is always a boss. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So Gerard, Gerard, did you ever do any of the open workouts? Uh, uh, what is that? The workouts before the fight where you kind of maybe spar or hit the pads. Did you do any of those? Oh, no. All right, so what you, nobody followed you around videotaping you in regards to trying to find out your movements? No. Because they no. did Zane Frazier and they did Art Jimerson, yeah. but they never they never followed you around. No, no. Because when they do, when they do I show other things because I'm not stupid. Did we, oh, were there people there to watch you then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's... Yeah, 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 and they think, oh, he's a kicker, oh, he's a puncher. What they think, I let them think what they want. When you broke your hand in the first fight, when you were in the locker room taping it up and figuring out, do you think any of the doctors or personnel was relaying that information to any of the yes. other fighters? Yes, it was. A, it is maybe a terrible word, but it was a good organized mafia. But the word mafia is a, maybe too, too rude. But it was everything was connected. That they have to win the the crazy have to win, and they make a very good job on that on that moment. They did a great job of making it just a big commercial for Gracie Jiu Jitsu. I mean, they flew him out a month early. He had his own locker room. He had oxygen in there. Nobody else had any advantage like he did compared to you guys. They wanted him to win from the beginning. And but then and they do and they make a good job. Yeah, well, Gerard hit his cigarettes, all right? Yes. That's right. So UFC won. You beat Taylor Tooley. You go back to the locker room. What's in your head at that moment? Next round? No Who care. No, no, no. If you, you, I'm not, I'm not care, no. I'm not afraid, but I always uh, watch out because the... Have to be, uh, you have to be focused on the next fight. You don't can release your uh, emotions and your uh, how do you call it? Uh, adrenaline. Adrenaline. You have to be. It had to be high. And then if the adrenaline is high, then you are more alert to to do the next fight. Because I was using to fighting in 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 Japan and, and Holland and Europe, many tournaments on karate, and then you have to fight. 11, 10 to 11 fights every day. Because I was used to it that I continue. If you win, you go to the next round, you go to the next, and then in karate, mm-hmm. is the, that's the reason I I was familiar with it. So when, when you were there, were you watching other fighters thinking, this guy's going to be a problem, this guy's good? And were you watching Hoyt thinking, this guy's pretty, I mean, he's going to be a problem? Or was there anybody you thought was going to be tough? Or was this surprising? No. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Kevin Rozier was your second opponent. Yeah, normally, your... normally, normally, Gracie was my first fight, eh? Was it supposed to be your first fight and then they moved it? Because when the Japanese was there and they make pictures of me because the Japanese know me. And they say, hey, who is the, who is the guy? Who is the small uh, white guy from Holland? 
And the Japanese said, he fight many times in Japan, too, that one, that one, that one. And then they changed it. And then I know, hey, they, they, are, they are scared. Well, I mean, what a disaster it would have been for them had you fought him first and beat him. Their whole thing is over. There is yes. no jiu-jitsu in America. No, then, then I hope it was, it was that, then everybody do karate. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think they would have turned the pay-per-view feed off. You know, it's yeah. over. Everybody go home. Everybody go home. Our guy lost. I know there's more fights, but go home. <laughs> so, but uh, I then I fight uh, Rocher, and they announce him uh, like a kickboxer. But if you're a good kickboxer, everybody in Holland do kickboxing, then we know who is Frazier. But nobody knows because America is an island. And if you're a champion of America, you're not a world champion. But they announce him as a world champion kickboxing. And I think by myself, wow. Now I show him the European way. Taylor Tooley, you took 26 seconds. Kevin Rozier, you took 59 seconds. And you're pretty banged up going into the finals against Toys Gracie. But with Rozier, you were using your elbows like... The way you used your elbows was very cutting edge. I'd see years later, people kind of caught up to that type of technique. But at that moment, at that time, it was very, very cutting edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But because I love techniques. I, every day I train techniques. Every day the techniques have to be good. If you're a good technique, the damage have to be less, so less as possible. Because you have good technique. Because I, when I when I break my hand, after that I look to the tape, and I know in my then I see what I make a wrong. I I, I uh, make the punch too quick. That's the reason I I break my hand. When I went one second, I can make uh, in, in, uh, how do you call it in Japanese in tamisiwara like a punch downstairs. Straight, but now I make a little bit uppercut, and I don't hit him good on the on the chin, but on the on the on his head, because I I hit him too 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 quick. I don't control that moment of technique, and that's the reason I break my hand. Wow, wow! After Rozier, you're walking into the finals. When do you kind of know that the entire event is fixed for the Gracies to win? Uh, can you explain what you mean? At what point in the event do you realize that the whole fight is to have the Gracie win? Is it at this moment or is it prior or after? After. 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 Okay. Yeah, after. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was a little bit disappointed that I lose, but. Then I think by my after that I cannot think and calculate everything and then I think by myself why I lose what's the what's the problem that I lose not by fighting because I I, I show my skills but I miss the techniques of uh, jiu jitsu nobody knows what it is in that time nobody also me I don't know because I do wrestling everybody do wrestling and then they. Uh, I make contact with 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 the G, uh, BGG, and then I know, hey, I missed something. And after that, I got training with uh, Remco Podu in Holland to be also a good uh, Jiu Jitsu guy, because that's the only thing that I never train because we don't know. It is more than we don't know it, then we make a mistake. So, so when when I used to. In the late 90s, I started fighting over in Japan in Pancras, and Boss Rutten was really big over there. Did you ever train with Boss Rutten? Yes. He's a nice guy. He's a real... He, I, when I see him on television, I think by myself, he's not Dutch. He's a real American. <laughs> Boss always has been like a, in a color commentary role. It, it's like it, it came so naturally for him. Like I, his, his entire career, he's been sitting behind a microphone and fighting. Yes, but he he can do that. When I sit there, I cannot do what he do. He he he, 
he fits in the frame of that uh, kind of uh, work. Because he was in, uh, in Holland, he was a very good high jumper, you know? He was Dutch champion high, high jumping. Athletic, you know, athletic? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, high jump. He yeah. was a high jump. When you fought Hoist Gracie, okay. why don't you walk us through the fight from your eyes, your perspective? Uh, yeah, I do what I, I do what I train and I do what I can, but he have to answer to to grab me. And then when I, when we stand up and uh, there was no 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 danger, but when we go to the floor, then I go directly to a wrestling and wrestling is is uh, I always train wrestling. Don't go to your back because there's a point or a point that you lose. That's the reason I go to my stomach. And the first lesson in BGG is don't go to your stomach, go to your back. Now that I know now. But at that moment, I go to my stomach. I don't want to lay on my back. And when when he grabbed me, I say something not polite in his ear. I bite him first. You bite? You bit him first? Yeah, in his ear. Okay. Okay. Fair. And I say, that's fair. I, then I say, yeah, because I don't like losing. Every time when I see him, he always, I train with him in Holland when he comes over, and he always said, "Why you do this?" I said, "Look on the poster. There are no rules." And then I know he's a sportsman. That's it. When you bid him. The yeah. rumor, well, well, first off, I mean, you got the first rule infraction you ever committed in the UFC, but there was also a fine for eye gouging and I think biting. Those are the only two rules, no biting, no eye gouging. Did they fine you for that? No, no, no. Did the Gracies show up at your hotel later trying to find you? No. Nope. That was a rumor. Okay. The rumor was that you were informed that you were only a reserve fighter and not fighting in the actual event until a few hours before. Oh, no, no. Don't believe any rumor. Okay. That's well, we're here to clear that up. Your original nickname, The Undertaker from Hell. Yes. Yes. <laughs> How does that come about? Um... Uh, I fight many times in Japan before that. And I always think that my opponent have always to think about me after the fight. Some, I, I, I break your nose, then you look in the mirror. I never stop. In the fight, the, the referee have to take me off because if you, I, you want to fight with me, I fight to the end. That's the reason they say the undertaker for my own. I always keep continue. And when the referee say stop, I don't stop. They have to touch me. Because everybody can can uh, uh, say announcement in, in, the, in the ring or out the ring and say stop. And then you stop and then they, they hit you. I never listen to the referee, never. Hey, Gerard, uh, you were saying you were fighting over in Japan before. What, what was there an organization? Was it just kickboxing? What were you fighting in over there? Was it? What, what was your organization? Uh, shoot, shoot boxing. Uh, K one. I was the first K one, but the, the traditional K one. You have to fight three rounds karate, and two and, and two rounds kickboxing. That's that is the the original K one, but all the fighters from everywhere don't want to do karate the full contact chuck shin nobody want to do that that's the reason they they take the, the karate out and do only kickboxing in k1 you fought masaki sataki in the 1993 k1 world uh, world karate cup he's a guy known for his toughness yes but i'm tougher <laughs> How soon before UFC 1 did that fight take place? 
Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's the same year. Yeah, it's the same year. Oh yeah, yeah. But the people think too much about oh, I have to uh, have to rest uh, uh, six weeks. I have to prepare eight months. Fuck you. Uh, sometimes I fight in Japan. I fly over to Europe. Fight again. Two days later in in uh, in Holland. Then three days later I go back to Japan. I fight maybe. Three or four tournaments in one week. George, you're, you're you're the old school mentality. I remember I would did the same thing at the time. And a lot of people back in the late nineties, we always fought a lot and uh, didn't <laughs> didn't peak for camps. And then uh, the way they do things now, maybe three times a year. I remember fighting five times in a month once. It was yes. just yes. it's just different nowadays. It, it's soft. It's softer now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty Fight Club members. There's not going to be many more from here on out. If you have a fighter with fifty mixed martial arts fights, it's going to be very rare in the future. It's not going to be an easy thing to do. Yeah, yeah. But that the whole population is like that. The the whole world is like that. They talk too much. They're sitting too much on the phone, and that they, 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 they want to do everything, but they want to do nothing. They're weak. It's just a pathetic. Everybody's weak nowadays. They just don't. Everybody's afraid of everything. They don't do anything. It's yeah, talking and looking. It's 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 pathetic, and I can't stand it. We need to. I think we need to form our own country somewhere. Chris, don't worry. We are there. <laughs> hey, Chris, uh, you can come over later, and we can make TikTok dance videos. Okay. <laughs> It's not going to work for me. I don't even know. Yeah. I don't have a TikTok account. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Gerard, you were offered a contract at UFC 2, and you turned it down. What yes. was the reason? The reason was my sister lives in America. In, in LA, my sister lives for many, many, many years there. She was also in, in the nearby the auto, the blonde woman behind me is my sister. And she lives in America. And after the fight, she said, hey, do you know that I get a lot of money on pay-per-view? I said, what is pay-per-view? And they said, yeah, but they get a lot of money. I said, okay, there's no problem. Next time they go, they have to, they have to release the money because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not stupid. What did you get paid for the first what? one? What, what did you get paid for the first UFC? What do you think? $1,000 to show up. You made Rosier. You make it to the finals. 20 grand? And, and the first fight? Nothing. Wait, wait, what? Yeah. The first fight, nothing. If you win, it, if you win in, the, in the final, then you get the money. You got paid zero? I, I get paid because I'm in the final. Wow. So the guys who lost first round got nothing? Wow. Also nothing. Also nothing. Oh. A few bucks. Hey, they they the, the, the UFC is modeled after those guys. After those. Yeah, they haven't they haven't changed. <laughs> they haven't changed. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't changed. <laughs> there's, there's a reason the, se the, the second one, I said to our David, okay, I want to have 75,000 if I start. And they say, no. Okay, I, I say, I don't come. Because they have they, the first time they have millions. You you also mentioned Remco Pardue earlier, Chris. We got him lined up in a few weeks for an interview. Uh, Remco Pardue, did you train him for this fight? Not no. He, he he's a, a good sportsman. He trained by himself, and he asked me to to coach him. That's for UFC two. Yes. Oh, yes. probably the most violent UFC. You also worked with Freak Hammaker to compete yes. in UFC too. Did you train yes. him? Yes, yes. But in that in that moment, he said to me, "I want to, I want to do that." Okay, I say I've been phoned to uh, to our Davey. I say I have a good guy, but he have cancer. On that on that time, but he he want to do it. I said, okay, we say nothing. We go there and do your thing. 
but he's still alive. He's uh, get the operation, everything. It's good now. He was also a red light district guy, yes. wasn't he? Yes, 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 yes. What was his reputation on the street? Not bad. <laughs> Not so Not good. Not bad. It was good. Yeah, it was good. Depending on who you are, it's good, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a good guy. Oh, yeah. He, did he own a like an adult movie theater? No, he worked there in the red light district. Is uh, how do you call it in Holland? Red light. A banana bar. Uh, it's very famous. Uh, uh, very famous banana bar. A bar. Banana bar. They call it. And everybody, all all the doormen, have to train in one dojo to uh, get the red light district uh, clean from junkies and every idiots there. And every bouncer, every bouncer have to train in the dojo. On in the red light district. When the bulldog hash shop, yes. they were the first. Bob's yes. dirty Bob Schreiber was on the street. He was their security. When they first opened up and started selling the things that they weren't supposed to, yeah. What was the? I mean, were you guys worried about the cops or the government? Like, how, how does that get worked out? No, 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 no. It's uh, we are a liberal uh, country. In Holland, you can do everything what you want. But they were the first. Yes. In my city, I was the first also at, at the, the coffee shop. <laughs> In my city, I was ne- not from Amsterdam. I'm from Den Haag. Aya. And I have my coffee shop there also. Because if you not, don't, don't make problems, but you do your business, there are no problems. There's no problem. Be- because we have to pay tax. <laughs> Ribcar Purdue, you're in his corner. Yes. He, he fights Alberto Sarah Leon, Orlando Wheat, and Hoyce Gracie. Yeah. Now, you knew after UFC won that it was very organized for everything for the Gracies to win. What steps did you take in order to try to disrupt that for UFC 2? Fight them and try to win on their skills because uh, Red Kopadu is an also a BGG guy. And he, he, because he is a very good sportsman, that's the other thing he miss in his fights. He's a very good technical technical guy, but he has no, yeah, maybe it is not nice to say, but he has no balls to fight. He wants the sport and make sports to, on, before the sports. And I said to him, yeah, you can win, but you have to buy them or, or, or do something what is not allowed. See, see, Gerard, yeah, that's what we have right now. I do uh, commentary for the bare knuckle fighting, and uh, I would say that like too many other sports, it is a sport. This isn't a sport. This is a fight. That's why, like, we do the bare knuckle. It's just bare hands and punches, and we get too many people involved in MMA or whatever. They're they're great athletes and they're great yes. sportsmen, but they're not fighters. No, no, that's true. That's true. The the, the fighters do sports. And we do also sports, but we are the diff- The different is that we are fighters, and that are only a few, because you have m- many, many sheep and a, a few wolves. Chris, I think it comes down to there's natural athletes and then there's fighters, and there's a huge difference between the two. Yeah, yeah. because if you, if you are uh, a sportsman and you have your um, uh, how do you call it? If you're good in something, in one thing you are good, you're invalid. I have to train the punches maybe 1,000 times and then I know how it feels. But if you have it in, in one lesson, you can do the same, you're invalid because you don't train that anymore. It is better that, that <coughs> you train guys who is not athletic and not physical things but you can train that and if if they train that they are much better 
don't look for the the, the guys who do it in, in one one lesson or two lessons. It it for me is not good. When somebody with a with a tal with a talent come inside my dojo and he knows everything in one week, I know for sure he has no mentality. He's he he is an invalid. But somebody come in with the classes and the teas and, and he don't know nothing and he train him very hard because he, then he understand what he has to do. Because he has to work for it. To, to get uh, a good point. Ger Gerard, I have a question for you. I'll sometimes have a guy, they come in for the first time, and the first time they spar, if they start backing away, or sometimes they just bite down and start throwing, I feel like it's, it, you're born into that having that mentality, or you're not. I don't know if you can teach it. What do you think? Sometimes I think you're born a fighter, or you're not. But but sometimes you have, uh, like a trainer, we have to look for it. That we can him on that side or that side, we can uh, wake up the little thing in in him that he get. Hey, now I get it. Now I understand. Now I do. It. But you have to uh, let them think by themselves and don't say it to him. Sometimes my students ask, "Why you have to do this?" I said, "Don't ask. Find out." If if I explain it, he knows it. He don't have to think. They have to think how to do, what to do, and maybe later they understand, oh, now I understand why he let me go to the left, or now I know why my trainer said to go to the right. Or you have to wake up the people, but they are too lazy. To, this, this kind of world are too lazy, because everything, the first thing they said, pop, mama, what I have to do? Fuck off, man. Go outside, go out in the world and, and train yourself. Or train what you want. You want to be the best? You have to work for it. You don't get sitting on, on your eye. So, Gerard, UFC 2, how come you get two entries? You get Remco Pardue and Freak Hamaker. Why do they allow two people from the same team or same I mean, connection in the tournament? Because they, they don't know that we are from the same team. They didn't know. Oh, my gosh. You were trying to win that tournament. <laughs> Any way possible. Wow. Now, Freak Amaker, um, he also withdrew after the tournament, after Thad Luster. What happened with him? Uh, he has cancer. I told you, you have cancer. You want to do one fight. You want to be, you want to be for him, do one fight. That's the reason he do one fight. And that's it. That's amazing. That's a, that's a fucking real man. That's a yeah. real man. Yes. 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 Wow. Dave Levicki, July 29th, 1994, Valley Tudo, Japan. You train him for Hicks and Gracie. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. Yeah. How does that come about? <coughs> we, we meet we meet in, in, in Denver and everything, and we keep in contact because after the fights, our very, we are very social and we are Budo. We can talk with each other. You can be angry, but not stay angry. And that's the reason we keep in contact. <coughs> and I find out his mentality was not so not so uh, not so good anymore. We have a lot of pride. have a lot of problems. It was a pity for the guy. I'm a pity. I, I'm really pity for that guy because so, he, he have a good heart. You had talked about the Gracies organized in order to win the tournament. Did did you feel the same way about this event with Hicks and Gracie? Less. Really? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, less. Because they, yeah. they they win the first thing and that and then that was that was it. That was or die or living. And they live. Okay. And they make a good job. I was hoping that I win that do every everybody do karate. Now, what was your what was your feelings of Hickson? 
good. Yeah. Yeah, good sportsman. Really, they are very good, good sportsmen. They know what they do. But I always say, I do everything. I go to kickboxing, I do MMA, I do uh, whatever. They do only jiu-jitsu. Very well, yeah. And I, I make uh, an, uh, I make an op- uh, how do you call it an opposite. I make a suggestion suggestion that I want to make t- three fights: one kickboxing, one karate, one one jiu-jitsu. The best of the like the, like tennis, you know. Like Shidakan, like Shidakan. Yeah, but they don't want to do it. Were you offered to a spot in the first Ultimate Ultimate tournament? What? The the UFC had a tournament called the Ultimate Ultimate. Yes. Were you offered a, a spot in that? No, oh, I never, never, never ask me for something. Never. The only the last time I was in, in Denver, the last time. Two months, a uh, few months ago, that's the first thing that they give me uh, a, a call that uh, I have to go to to Denver again. And after that, I heard nothing, nothing, total nothing. It's a pity because I'm the first fighter and the first knockout, the first UFC in the final. Because I'm not American. That's the pity for them. I'll be much great, uh, bigger than everybody if I stay in, in the United States. But I go to back to Holland because I don't like it there. Your April 20th, 1995, Japan Valley Tudo, Yuki Nakai. Mm-hmm. Would you mind talking us through that fight? Yeah, we fight. And uh, they have... Uh, I be, I, be, I make a little beat them up and say and say in the fight to the referee, you have to stop this because otherwise it's not good for him. I told them they'll get in in the referee in in the fight. I told talk to the Japanese. I say you have to stop it otherwise I do something with him. What is not not uh, nice, and I put take his eye out. He took his eye out. You also gave interviews afterward with no regret in regards to it. Yes. I don't care. I care for him because later I was in Japan. I go to his dojo. I go to him because we are sportsmen. I'm not angry about it. I, I was only a little bit upset by the referees and, and the system there. They, they have. I said to him, why you why you continue this fight? Because you know something gonna happen. And they said, No, we are the best, we are this. Okay. This is the result. Was there any like Yuki Nakai is kind of a known Yakuza affiliated person? Was there any pushback in regards to your actions afterward from the Yakuza? Yes. Yes. Could you open uh, up about that? No, uh, not not so not too much because uh, I have to go in December also to Japan. And you talk about yeah, it worked out. Yeah, yeah, it worked out. Everything worked out though. Yeah, the, yeah. the rumor the rumor was that Yuki Nakai, when you would go to Japan, he would pick you up at the airport. Yeah, was that uncomfortable? No, no, because after the fight, it's after the fight. In the fight, you have troubles. After the fight, no. Before the fight, no. No. In the fight, you have to... If you fight with me, you have a tr- you get trouble, in trouble. And, and don't, I, I don't care about the rules, or I don't care about... I try to, to follow the rules, but when I don't can do it, I bite you. Nikai also gave an interview stating that he waited over a week to go to the hospital to get his eye looked at. And because of that, they, the infection, because he waited so long, was one of the reasons he lost his eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a pity for him. But I don't blame him. I don't blame myself. I blame the organization. 
<laughs> in a pro wrestling match with Ensign Anyway. Anyway, yeah. yeah. It seemed to end a little prematurely early. Was it getting real serious between you two in there? No, no, no. We make a good job. We are professionals. <laughs> this pro wrestling it's... is pro wrestling. Ensign Anyway, also a person with an affiliation over there. How would you describe your relationship with him? I'm really, you can ask all my opponents. We are good. There's no problem. Really, no, it's okay. Did you ever fight Bronco Sikatek? Yes. In the holy, holy shit. You've got two guys that ride the line and don't mind crossing when it comes to rule breaking. How did that match go? Good. <laughs> if you do something, why are you not good? In, they do. They want to do also uh, Kyokushin Karate, but I'm too good in Kyokushin Karate than they, but they want to try it and then you have a problem. You have to do good where you're good, where you're good in this. And, do, and don't try our uh, from the side, everything is easy. If you look there, the two guys in a white suit, uh, pff, it's a little bit karate. But if you do it, it's terrible. It's terrible. The Kyokushin is the, the hardest fighting system what there is because no punch fa uh, fa uh, punch to the face. And it's very terrible. July 29th, 1995, Shudo, Eric Paulson versus Ben Spikers. You're in you're in Ben Spiker's corner. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a 1998 Olympic bronze judo medalist. Eric Paulson is uh, the absolute legend here in the United States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. That's it. Okay, you trained Ben for that. It went five rounds. He got caught in guillotine. No, no, no. Uh, they asked me to uh, to coach them because I have a good, uh, good. Uh, how do you call it? I'm good in in analyzed uh, in the fights. What's happening in in like uh, Mister Van der Plas? My goal is my thing is I see it in one two seconds where I have to look for because I know the the quality of my fighters what they can do. They always say, yeah, you have to go forward. But if you don't can fight forwards, don't say go forwards. Or kick him. If you don't can kick, don't kick him. But don't let him do it. Because I know the quality of the, my fighters and the weakness of the of the opponent. And if you make that together, you can win the fight. What was your opinion of Epi Etcheld as a manager? What about Simon Rutz? Oh man, both those guys, huh? Yeah. They don't. Okay. They don't think about sports. They think about the self and the money. Simon Rutz gave an interview stating that he believed Epi Etchild hired a hitman to kill him. Yeah. Yeah, there was there was a few problems in Holland too. Yeah. What about Bas Boon? It's just the same category. Across the board, you didn't like any of those guys, huh? No, no. I don't invite them for. I don't invite them for a cup of tea of my home. No. Did you ever work out with Sammy Schult? Yes. Yes. What was your opinion of him? He's a big, he's a big guy, and a little bit how do you call it in English? Stop it! Stop it! Is that the, the English word? Stop it! St stubborn, stubborn. Yeah, the his own thing. He think he think only for himself, not around everything. Stop okay, it. those stubborn, stubborn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. You had a very big reputation in Japan. Yes. yes. 
I would even say your reputation in Japan was larger there than it was in your home country, which is yes. pretty crazy. Yes. And Ogawa was wrestling Hashimoto. Yes. And Ogawa, the match turned into an actual fight yes. with Ogawa beating on Hashimoto. Ogawa grabs the microphone and told the audience to wake up in order to try to embarrass the organization. He makes sure that you're in his corner to have his back. How? Yes. Please, please walk us through this. Uh, Mr. Inoki, you know Inoki? Of course. Of course. Of course. Yes, of course. I, I, I fight with him in Tokyo Dome. And after that, he asked me to uh, be a cornerman of Okawa. I said, okay. Then I go home and I think by myself, why they asked me to go hit this corner? I said, okay, I come. Uh, after a few weeks, I go there. And Okawa will have to fight to, uh, to, to that guy. And he said, you have to protect him. I said, protect for what? This, this is a fight. No, but maybe it's going wrong. I said, okay, I do it. I sat in the corner. And then he... he uh, Make uh, something like a car. Oh, and after the 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 referee go in, he kick him in the face, and and then he come back to the. I take him, go back to the corner. I say, "Hey, motherfucker, why you do that?" I say, "Ah, blah, 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 blah. okay." And then the the Ochidesis of that organization try to uh, to attack him. And my uh, cornerman, I call it cornerman. They take him and they drag him out of the ring and beat him up. He go to the hospital with the injuries on, on the head. And they want to they, they uh, attack us, uh, Okawa and me. But I speak a little bit Japanese and say to the guys, uh, be, be relaxed, uh, everything is stopped now. And then he's standing behind me in the corner. And then uh, he... He want to continue and then put him back in the corner. Said, "Hey, shut up, stay here and do nothing. That it, everything is relaxed." And then the big boss come, the big boss, really big boss from organization come to the ring, and all the Oshidesi guys go go like uh, us, 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 and he come to me, and I speak to him in Japanese from the Tutamata uh, Everything is clear now. We do nothing, but he have to make his point and he make a finger to my eye the big guy the the the, the head of the organization and i think by myself but you don't do anything in in the, in the public to me when you put your finger down i hit him in the face i knock him out and then the trouble starts well you say trouble a full-on riot started yes. yeah yeah, yes. it was between New Japan and the UFO wrestlers. Like it was. Yes. Go ahead. Yes, I have to not really run, but I run for my life because I think twenty-five people want to take me in Tokyo Dome, but I know the role, the 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 how do you call it the uh, the I know the way under the Tokyo Dome, and I take an an iron pipe and way downstairs when they come I, I have to kill somebody or I don't know what I take a cab I go to my hotel and then they come to the hotel and I have to talk with they take me to the organization and I have to talk there yeah. how did they go? yes and then they're standing there and I think 20 20 Japanese people with black suits and a little bit uh, little other stuff. I said to the, the biggest guy in Japan, really the biggest guy, I said, why are they standing here? I'm alone. And then he said to me, oh, you're a real guy. I said, yeah, what do you want? Send them away and we talk together. And then we talk it out. Very intense. Yes. That's insane. Joey, 
we've been trying to track this guy down for years. That's the years. clip right there. Yeah. Years. We've been Gerard, we've been looking for you forever. Ever. Email well, that me. Was, email me. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's that's yeah. So that was January 4th, 1999. That's what that event took place. And you figure he's got Yuki Nakai, he's got this. But December 5th, 2000, Remix Japan, you go back out there in your corner, Marlo's Conan, one of, one of the greatest female athletes ever. Yes. Yes. Fearless. Fearless. Yes. yes. But no mentality. She, I mean, she really only lost to uh, Chris Cyborg. Yeah, yeah, but she, she can lose, of course. But the mentality of... I don't like her mentality. I don't like her mentality. I don't want to be negative to all the fighters, but that I have many experience. Because when she is now on television uh, to announce something, why you forget my name? I don't like that. You know, she was very complimentary of you in our interview. I know, I know, in the interview. But the day after I exist, and the day after that I exist. Don't forget. Okay, that's fair. Um, you also she actually beat Becky Levi, who was an Olympic. I think she was like an Olympic. You know something. Uh, Olympic Olympian for the United States. Uh, she was a very very large woman. It was an open weight tournament, and Marlowe's beat her. Like it, it actually retired Becky. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she was a good, ex external good fighter. She know what she do. She trained very hard for that. But that, that is not all. You have to be complete. Also in your mind. And don't forget where you come from. Many people forget where they come from. I don't like that. Yeah, huge tournament. She won it. She actually won a tournament twice. Yes. Um, some of the people that you've trained, Murad Bauzidi. Oh, yes, yes. One of your students. Yes, he was the... Joey, that's the number we need. Yeah, exactly. I didn't uh, know that existed. I sent I it to you. I have it for 40 years, the same number. But I give you later. I, I okay, give it to you. Okay, okay. <laughs> Murad Bauzidi was a small boy. 15 years, 16 years he starts. And they make him the most beautiful kickboxing fighter of the world. Kickboxing fighter. Sportsman. Not a fighter. He's not a fighter. He's a sportsman. But really, really, really good. Then he changed from school. He wanted that. I said always to him, uh, don't sign any contract with nobody. Because if you sign a contract, you're dead. I never signed a contract. Only on that moment, we fight. After that, bye-bye. It's amazing that we're talking to him. It's more amazing he's breathing still. Yeah, you're you know? still alive. Yeah, Gerard, you're yeah. on this side of the grass. Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be make fun in your life. Yeah, amen. That's it. Don't bore, don't think about the world because it, it keep turning and all the problems. Forget. Think about yourself and make fun. What about Anil Dubar? Yes. One of another one of your students, Muay Thai yes. legend. Yes, we fight in Thailand. We fight MMA. Yeah, he's still training. I met him a reg a regular. Oh, yeah, we talk about Bushidi. I make him a very good technical fighter. That was his, uh, yes, his, his, his thing, technical fighter. And I always say to him, don't sign anything. But then, then people behind my back go to him. I said, yeah, if you come to, with me, then I sign the contract for K1. And then later I find out that he go to another guy who said, yeah, I signed a contract with K1. I said, why you do that? Because now they're, now they're going to kill you because you're 90 kilos and you go to the heavyweights. 
you you don't have you don't can do that. Yeah, I want to I want to do K one because K one was very popular. I said, don't do it, and they do it. I said, okay, if you want to do it, do it. It's the end of your career, and and that's happened. And also, my dude, yeah, Sam Sono, one of your Sam, students. Yes, another world champion. This guy said three world champions students yes. like from man we're not talking poaching good no. talent we're talking taking somebody from their white belt to a to world the, title yes yes big big difference yes because everybody goes to the big schools and think that the, the, the grass is greener than with me and i'm very direct i don't like sh sh talking shit if it is not good, it is not good. And they don't appreciate that much, except this this 10 guys who have in my dojo, like Sam Snow. Now he's going to Italy. We go to, with 23 people in Japan with him, also to uh, to Japan. We, st they, we are still connected because they know who I am. And I don't want, uh, want to... Fuck them. No. But because they're good guys. One of my dream matches would have been you and Pat Smith. Was that fight ever offered? Pat Smith? UFC know. won Pat Smith. Would you, were you ever offered Pat Smith? No. Okay. No. For the general public... How would you want them to remember you? That, that I am uh, not the not always the champion, but, but the best fighter. Because I fight everything and don't say any uh, stop any fights. If somebody say you want to make judo. Okay, I do judo. You want a boxing? I would boxing. Uh, I want to fight to, to Mike Tyson? I fight Mike Tyson. Or you fight with him? Yes, I do. And other people make choices, and I don't like that. You want to be the best? You have to be the best in everything, I think. You talked about serious interactions with the Yakuza in Japan. How serious interactions have you had with some of the mafia in, in Holland? Uh, I know everybody in that time. Hey, yeah. Gerard, I, I, listen, I'm not, you know, who am I as compared to tell you what to do? Nobody. But exactly, exactly. But those stories need to be made into a movie. Yes, and I want, and I want, and I want to play myself. You should play yourself, but they also need to be recorded. Those yes. stories. I'm not saying released. No, but they, but they need to be recorded. Yes, let let, let, let try to to uh, let it happen. I give you my phone number later. <laughs> I do work in Hollywood. He Joey does. <laughs> Joey does work yes, in do. Hollywood. In fact, I'm the only guy in Hollywood that doesn't have an idea for a script. Now I have one. <laughs> <laughs> because when I was, I was 18, 19, 18, 19, and everybody said, yeah, in Japan are the best fighters. Okay. I pay myself a ticket, go to Japan, and knock on the door for everybody. I do sumo. I beat a big sumo guy there. I fight to Akibono. Wow. Like in a street fight or in a match? In a match. Okay. I fight a television a sumo. Then I go to Sido Karate, like for Mr. Ishii. He made the K1. I go there, knock on the door, and said, who's the fucking champion here? I want to fight him. And I go to every dojo, and every organization, I knock on the door, and I say, I want to fight the best fighters of you. By myself, no, no... Uh, no coaching. My, I take my brother. 
and we go knock on the door for everybody. Shoot boxing, kickboxing. I go in, in Thailand. They who's the fucking the best in Thailand? Oh, I fight in Thailand. I do everything by myself. I don't wait. If you wait, you go to the dentist in the, in the waiting room. You have to do it. And then you can find out what 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 you miss or what you have, uh, what, what are your skills. Don't wait. Go there. If you want to do K1, I knock on the door. I go to uh, Mr. Rutsch. I say, I have a good guy from Romania. He was 70 years old. I see him there. We fight there in Romania. And uh, I said to him, hey, you have to come to Holland. He come to Holland. He, I make him K1. I said to Rutsch, Mr. Rutsch, I have a good one for you. He have a good, good, a good face. He have a good body. <clears throat> and he beat everybody in Holland. But I said, Mr. Rutsch said, yeah, but what, what do we, why we need the Romanian guy? We don't, he can fight, but we don't pay him. I said, okay, I show you he's the best. And he was the best. Hmm. When you became famous, did your father ever reach out to you? No, uh, uh, I was 12 years old almost 12 years old and my father died oh okay and i have six six brothers and sisters under me holy shit yeah yeah was it natural or was it uh yeah, yeah. it was sick it was 12 so Hey, Gerard, we'll wrap up, buddy. We've had you for over two hours. Man, I, I honestly, the wait was worth care. it. I don't care. There's no problem. But I, I have to uh, charge my uh, iPod. Yeah. Joey, let's wrap this thing up, man. <clears throat> no problem. Gerard. <sighs> As long as I have been on this podcast, yeah. Mike has been dreaming of finally yes. getting you on. That's true. You were worth all the hoops we jumped through hearing your story. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not making it up. I am the only guy in Hollywood who's not pitching a script. And now I think I'm pitching one. Yeah. You need to be a movie. Yeah, why not? I agree. I think we need to get those stories that you don't want to tell on here recorded for later. And I think we go around and shop a script. I, I'm honest. Yeah. We, uh, I give my phone number to him, and then we contact. There's no problem. Absolutely. You. Chard, you're an absolute gentleman. I, mind blown. Thank you, sir. Greatly appreciate it. Nice meeting you. No problem. No problem. But it was not easier to, that, that you uh, bring me over to America to talk. It would, uh, well, Joey, of course. We can use <laughs> oh, yeah. We can, I'll just make a couple of phone calls. Yeah, he's got a couch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll do it over the phone at first, my friend. Okay. Uh, so, all right, Gerard. Take care, buddy. Thank you. No problem. Man, Joey. Did I just agree to get a movie made? Am I going to get, am I in trouble now? I, I would say, uh, you know, I explained to your wife that she might be moving out for a little bit. Yeah. With the, with the kids. With the kids. Man, so how is he alive? I, I heard about this pro wrestling thing, but I, 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 didn't, I didn't know the extent of it. I heard it was just a big fight between the two wrestlers, and Gerard was there, and he got involved, and he almost got killed after. And, like, I did the timeline on it. Like, it took me a minute to kind of figure out the timeline because there's not a lot of documentation on it. And it was like, well, wait a minute. He it was after Yuki Nakai, and he, uh, you know, he went back. Yeah. Yeah, went back and caused way more trouble. Yeah. He didn't yeah. eye gouge their friend. He punched the boss. Oh. Well, here, he took an eye out of a guy that was a known. Yeah. I, I, I mean, he's absolutely yakuza up from top to bottom. For sure. Man, dude. That's amazing enough, but punch a boss and get away with it? I, I just, I don't publicly, understand it. Publicly yeah, and then go publicly. back. You know, in other yeah. words, hey, you can't come back to this country. That wasn't, 
Like there had to have been a give. There had to. Uh, I don't know. You had, you had to appease an ego there. Oh yeah, I'm surprised they didn't make him fly home in a dress. Or something. You know what we should, or you know what we should have done. We should have asked to see his fingers. Yeah. I want... yeah. Fuck. Damn. All right. Well, when I text him, I'm asking him. I'll ask him for a picture. Ladies and gentlemen, the amount of prep in wait, Joey, was I fanboying this morning? Absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah you were gushing. I was, yeah, I was. I was. I admit yeah, it's that. okay. I got that way for Shamrock. I understand. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's like Lytle's my guy, Coleman's my guy. Here, Sean Wheelock, one of the greatest color commentators ever. Dude, I admit, like I get little butterflies with him. Yeah. You know, an odd name to throw out with in that category. And Gerard Gardeau, 100 percent I'll tell you another guy, Harold Howard. Anybody that gets us Harold Howard. Joey. We got some bribes you're gonna be interested in. We do. We'll brighten up your day. We'll put it that way. You want to go to a different atmosphere or a, a different dimension without leaving your couch? We got you. <laughs> Joey, man, dude, that was like, share, subscribe. If you guys like this type of contact, we're in the middle of UFC one October. I think every October we're going to come up with a different theme. Um, all right. Who do we got so far? Zane Frazier, two. We got two in the books. We got Shamrock. We got Jimerson. We got Daily Gerard Gerdo. We're, we're going to get Taylor Tooley. And we got Charlie else? Angelone, who stood in for Kevin Rozier. Charlie so, Angelone. So we got covering. Yeah. yeah. We're covering all of the surviving guys. Shamrock. I'll make some hoist calls. Shamrock. Angelone. Gerdo. We're at number six. Wait, here. Frazier, Shamrock, Jimerson, Gerdo, Angelone. Tuli. So that's seven. If we can yeah. get three more, we can go two a week. Yeah. For October. That's right. It's a big push. It's a big week for, it's a big month for uh, UFC nostalgia. So tell your friends, tell your sensei, start listening. We need three more. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't like, share, and subscribe this, it goes get away. Off of our channel. Leave. Get out of here. You're not welcome. So, man, yeah. Joey, hey. excellent job. You, you did a great job tracking this one down, man. Yeah, yeah. Glad it worked out for you. Check out the full interview on iTunes, Spotify, and all major podcast platforms.